Hey everybody, welcome back to the Balanced Vibes Podcast. My name is Kirsten. Today we're going to talk about five workout mistakes that you might be making and therefore your workouts are just worthless or totally useless, all right? So I think this is important to cover because unfortunately too many people are putting in all the work and not getting results because they are making these mistakes and they think that they're doing everything right, but they just don't know better. And let me tell you the the Instagram and the social media isn't really helpful with that either, depending, of course, who you follow. But a lot of the time you see the influencers doing just some exercises that have really no correct sequence or, or correct exercise choice to begin with. They're just doing a million things at once or like uh, changing things up all the time. And this is not really helpful because if you think that, okay, this person looks really, really awesome, she must be... You know, she must know what she's talking about. I'm going to do her workouts. And then if you're doing it and you're not getting results, you might be thinking, what is wrong with me? Why is my body not responding the same way that she's, that her is there? So I wanted to cover this today and make sure that you know what are the right things to do. I have also done a similar episode previously where I covered some other things in addition to the ones that I'm talking about today. And this is episode number 163, where I'm also talking about what are some of the mistakes that you might be making that are not letting you get the results that you want to get. All right, so the first thing that people get wrong is thinking that they have to confuse their muscles. So muscle confusion, what does it mean? Well, in theory, it's like you have to do a lot of different things so that you get your muscles responding because if you spend too much time doing the same thing, same muscles, then it gets kind of boring and your body doesn't change anymore. So therefore, muscle confusion. And that also then means that you are changing your workouts all the time. And this is a big thing. Uh, People really think that every single workout should look different. And let me tell you, this is not the case at all. And this is not the case at all because you need consistency more than you need a muscle confusion. And I was trying to come up with a good analogy. And I don't know if I was successful or not, but I was thinking about how it is to train a puppy. Right? I don't have dogs. I I can't have dogs at least right now. Uh, but uh, I'm imagining that if you want to train a puppy and teach them a couple of things, then you can't be like one day there's one set of rules and the other day there's a different set of rules and one day one thing was allowed and the next day the same thing wasn't allowed anymore. The puppy's never going to learn anything. And your body's actually kind of similar, right? If you keep confusing it, if you keep doing a bazillion different things all the time, there is no consistency. And you're not giving your body the reason to change to give you the results that you are looking for. So instead of trying to confuse your muscles all the time, stick with a plan for a month. Do the same thing, okay? Let's say that you have three workouts in a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. These are different workouts, but then you repeat the same things the following week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, right? So it's always the same workout on Monday, always the same on Wednesday, and always the same on Friday. Of course, if you sometimes have to change your days, something comes up, you know, you're gonna do workout on Thursday, you know, you get the point, right? You just move the day, but you still can do the same three workouts every week for four weeks. You know, sometimes it can also be five weeks or so. But the main point here is that they're not going to be every single week different workouts all the time throughout the month. You're not going to do uh, you know, three, six, what is that? 12, 24 workouts a week or 40 workouts a week. This is just unnecessary. And that doesn't teach your body anything. So if you're trying to confuse your body, especially if you're doing with small movements all the time, like different you know, kickbacks, and then there's a bicep curl, and then there's a hamstring curl, and there's like a, you know, very, very many small little things, then that doesn't really get you the results that you want to get. So stick with the plan, but just have a good plan, follow that for at least a month, and then change your plan, right? My program change to build is exactly like this. I'm going to put that in the show notes too, if you're interested in checking that out. Now, the second thing is that people are doing too many exercises per session. Typically, you see something like 20 exercises per session. There's stuff like random stuff often, like let's do some medicine ball slam, and then let's do some squat jump, the squat jumps, and then bicep curls, and then we're gonna jump on the box, and then we're gonna do push-ups, and then we're gonna sprint, and then we do some kettlebell kind of swings. It's just like a big, big mess. There's just so many different things, and you you don't need that. Actually, most of my plans are. Uh, plans where I have people do like five to eight exercises per per day, and that's it. And by the way, you can also have a really good plan by doing, uh, get really good results by doing three exercises per day, right? Uh, but you have to know how to design this type, this kind of 
um, program because these three exercises have to be the big compound lifts. They cannot be triceps uh, kickback or in the calf raise and uh, a push up, for example. It doesn't work this way. You have to uh, design it really well to get results from that. And interestingly, I've seen that sometimes um, talking to people uh, who work with personal trainers, sometimes personal trainers think for some reason that women have to work out differently from man, men in um, as far as like how many exercises there should be per workout. And especially remember somebody who said, yeah, my trainer told me that, okay, but, but women want that. So therefore we are doing, you know, 20, 25 exercises per workout. And I asked her, ask him how he's training his male clients. Is it the same thing? And probably not, right? So I don't know why this is the, the idea that women need to do different things. No, actually, it's not that different. The way you want to work out, it's not that different from how men work out. It still always comes back to compound movements and not doing a million of them. I would say eight movements per, uh, per session is plenty. A lot of the times, four or five is even plenty. It really depends who I'm talking to and what their goal is and what kind of a program I am designing for them. But the idea that you have to do 20, 25 different things in that workout is just silly to me and doesn't really give you the results that you are looking for. The next mistake that a lot of people are making, and that makes the workouts just useless, is moving super, super fast. And literally, this is pretty much useless. Um, so now, now when you're doing uh, an exercise, let's take biceps uh, curl, for example, and your weights are so light that you just bust out your 20 reps super, super fast, and you just don't even feel anything, then this doesn't do anything. It really doesn't. And, and sometimes I see this in videos, uh, Especially more like with beginners, they just think that the more important part is to get to the next exercise real quick. And therefore, they are just moving too fast. Or sometimes um, when I did more in-person training, the thing was like, okay, what are we going to do next when I finish this one? Or how many reps is this? And the idea is like, tell me the number of reps so I do it quickly and then we can move on to the next thing. But then the focus just goes away. You're not focusing on the lift itself. For example, you can do a squat in a totally unfocused way. You can just like bounce, you know, your knees a little bit and do it like half half squats or even a like quarter squats and do your 12 reps real quick. How does that feel versus doing a deep squat where you take your time to get your ass to grass, uh, to, so to speak, get low, uh, use as much muscle as possible, all the muscle fibers, you know, the glutes and the hamstrings and the quads and calves, everything really focusing and uh, tightening up your core. This feels totally different. And this is why doing it slowly in a more focused way is so much more important and so much more beneficial versus just like doing a million reps just so that you can basically say that I did it and then move on to the next thing. And unfortunately, this is a theme in a lot of our classes and things like that, just get things done really quickly, but this is not helpful. Now, the next thing, speaking of classes, um, is something that I personally have not experienced because I have not been in a class like this, but I hear that this is a thing and this is getting your heart rate up as much as possible. And I hear that even some classes you compare your heart rate to other people who uh, are in the class too, and you can see them in the screen and then, you know, yours is a certain number and your heart beats the process. And that means that you're putting the most, uh, you know, working the hardest. Uh, putting the most effort in it, and that's almost like a like a cool thing or something to to uh, try and get really good at. And this is not the goal of your strength training workout at all. It doesn't matter how hard your how high your heart rate goes. This is uh, this is totally this is insignificant. This is not what we're trying to train here. You absolutely 100% get cardiovascular benefits from strength training too. But the goal itself should not be to get your heart rate up as high as possible. This is not a purpose of your strength training workout. Your strength training workout is designed so, or should be designed so that you are getting stronger and you're building muscle. And uh, and the the fact like the your heart rate really doesn't matter as much. So uh, I think if you just keep doing that, if you keep focusing on that, if you keep like competing with other people in your group fitness class, uh, who has the highest heart rate, you are just missing out on the actual benefits that you should be getting. Besides, you're also getting really, really depleted and very exhausted from this workout because you are just pushing yourself really intensely. And it may feel like a good thing because you probably sweat a lot and you feel like, see, I did it. And I feel you know, I'm proud of myself. Very cool. But this, again, doesn't give you the benefits. Uh, the amount of sweat that you that you pour, it's not a marker of a good workout. Uh, also, the fact that how tired you are, this is also not a good marker of a good workout. 
but it's a good marker of a good workout is that do you feel your muscles work? Is your energy good after the workout? And are you getting results over time? So these things matter a lot more. Okay. And then the last thing that's uh, oftentimes useless, well, depending on what machine you use, but sometimes using, putting so much emphasis on machines. So people think that they cannot get results if they don't use machines. So they just uh, do basically all the workouts on machines. So here I would say, I wouldn't exactly say that it's like worthless. It's definitely not. There are a couple of machines that I like and use too, but I would say that focus should still be on free weights. So free weights are barbells, dumbbells, kettlebells, things like that. Uh, and if you have these tools, then you are, you're good. You don't necessarily need even any machine. So if you have a nice home setup with a barbell rack and some dumbbells, or even if it's just dumbbells, but they're heavy dumbbells, then I think you can get a lot done and you don't even have to worry about any machines. So of course there are some of the machines and um, that are really great. I personally like to use the cable machine quite a bit. I think the lat pull down and leg press uh, are pretty good too. So occasionally I do use them, but you are not missing out on anything if you don't have these these tools because you can do everything without them as well. And of course, sometimes uh, machines are necessary for those who maybe have some limitations or are coming back from an injury or maybe like older populations just getting started with working out. It's just safer and they, they just be more controlled because they are. So in these cases, of course, machines do have the benefits, but but to be thinking that you have to use all the different machines and for example, very common one that women think that is absolutely necessary, but isn't is the leg uh, um, leg uh, abduction, abduction, yes, abduction machine uh, where you, uh, you know, you're supposed to sculpt your glutes with that. Uh, this is also, I think it's, it's a good warm up and it's a good muscle priming um, machine before you do squats, for example, you can use it this way, but even that, you don't even need that. You can do a really good priming exercise also with a booty band, which you put around your knees and use some bridges and some lateral walks, things like that. So you don't need that machine and you don't need, you know, most of the other ones too. You can, if you want to, but don't just, um, you know, skip a workout or not do workouts because you think that you don't have the machines, you have access to them, then therefore you can't do a good workout. So this is not right at all. So what are then some of the things that you should be focusing on if you want to get good results? Well, the main thing, the one really big thing is that you should be focusing on the big five core lifts. And all these lifts I have listed uh, up for you in my Lean Ladies Calorie Protein and Workout Guide. So get that guide. It is in the show notes and everywhere else where I am. Uh, you learn what these five are. And these five are really the foundation of your workout. You don't have to do all of them in every single workout. Actually, I don't recommend that you do that. But you're going to pick one to three of them. And these should be the core of your every, every session. So the big ones, deadlift, squat, a bench press, row overhead press, or a, a variation of them, right? So uh, variations, um, you know, you can do single leg deadlift or for squat, you can do split squat. There are many variations, but these five, they are really your foundation. And, uh, and these will really give you the most results. Now, the next thing is that you should be using challenging weights. And I mentioned in one of the previous episodes to the episode uh, from Huberman Lab, where they talked about the benefits of lifting powerlifting style for women, especially, and the benefits of bone building for that. So uh, it's so much more beneficial to use challenging weights that really make your muscle work so that you build, build your strength and therefore you also build your bone. You don't get the same effect, bone uh, building effect, if you're lifting light weights and do 50 repetitions, or like I previously said, you know, doing 25 exercises and everything is like 25 reps, you don't get that benefit. So I really want you to make sure that you use challenging weights, but of course, make sure that your form is good before you start adding plates on, on the barbell or pick up heavier dumbbells. The next thing that you need to do if you want to have good workouts is to have breaks between your sets and actually just sit around and rest. That's all you do. You can, of course, take a couple of steps. It's not that you have to like, sit on the bench and not move. It's not like that. You can, of course, walk a little bit and maybe do a couple of stretches or like you know, loosen up your joints or whatever. Uh, so a couple of things like that you can do, but uh, breaks, you know, a minute to three minutes. Sometimes I even rest a little bit longer when I'm just finishing a heavy set of deadlifts, I'm, I'm sitting around a little bit longer because I want to be ready for my next set. So the idea that you just have to bounce from one exercise to another to get results is absolutely not right. What you want to do is use heavy enough weights 
so that you actually need that one to three minute break. And if you don't need that break, then probably your weights were not heavy enough for you. And then the last thing you absolutely need, and this is, this is of course, like a no brainer, but I have to say this, you have to be consistent with everything. You got to show up even if you don't want to. Sometimes you don't want to. And of course, I'm not talking about when you're sick or when you are, you know, really fatigued or you are injured. I'm not talking about these things. I'm just talking about well, it's kind of like, like, it's not a habit yet. I don't know if I want to do this. Kind of feels nice to sit here on a couch. You have to have a little bit more dedication. You have to have a little bit more discipline and do the stuff even if you don't want to. And I understand that sometimes, you know, the motivation can be low and sometimes just life throws stuff at you. And there's always, you know, look, you know, there there are exceptions to that but for the most part consistency just like with everything and let's talk about the puppy training again right you have to be consistent with it if you want your dog to learn something and this is the same thing with your body too if you want to get results you have to be consistent with it and uh, uh, like i mentioned in one of the previous episodes too if you're a beginner two workouts a week this is consistency too right to show up all the time twice a week week after week after week after week and this is how you build consistency if you are somewhere in the middle, you're more like intermediate than three days a week. This is your consistency, right? So you have to build that up and not do it like, you know, uh, I worked out hard two weeks and then I took a two week break and then now I'm going back, not like that. So you have to um, stick with what you have committed to. So I hope this podcast episode helped you to understand what are really the things that you don't have to pay attention to at all in your workouts that are kind of insignificant and pretty much make your workouts useless. And what are things that you have to be focusing instead if you want to get good results? So I hope you also join my Facebook group. It's totally free. It's called Fit and Fueled. Uh, join me there. We're talking about food and workouts and fun stuff. So it's a nice group of women there. You can ask all your questions there. Or whatever you have fitness related so i hope you join me there and if you have any other questions if you have any topics for this podcast i'm happy to hear what you have to say thank you so much for listening and i'll see you again very soon bye-bye